Hey guys, how's it going? Okay, so this is the train that was in my last video. Um, besides getting this one railing on and a few of the other little details and the, the risers or the sun visors, whatever they are there, um, this thing is all put together. And uh, uh, like I said in the last video, it has a sound file that uh, doesn't belong to this train. Um, I've been running this train and uh, something I, I just don't quite understand and it does it with some other decoders and uh, other trains that I have so um, I'm having a bit of an issue and I'll explain it here before I turn it on. Um, what seems to happen is uh, when I turn this train on and if I turn say another train on that I, I have uh, for some strange reason it, it does a different function on on the the, the train before it even uh, before I even touch the throttle. Um, so, for example, this one here is uh, you, you turn it on, it goes through the the beeping and and whatnot, and then it fires up, and then it's idling normal, and then all of a sudden it'll just click into full throttle, and then and then come down. And I'll show you that right now. There it is. It just clicks right into going full out, and I'm not sure why. And it does that. And now, now it'll run fine, except for um, an issue I'm having with this as well. Is I've had to put it in manual notching um, because no matter where I put the notch rate or or my speed step. As soon as this thing would even just slightly start rolling, it would rev right up, which is not what I'm looking for. I want it to kind of roll it idle and then notch up after a few speed steps. So this one, uh, a couple times, I'm using it's the sound bug, right? So function 6 is a notch up for manual notching. Function 7 is a notch down. For some strange reason, sometimes when I hit function 6 to notch it up, it'll actually cycle, it like, reboot the train. It'll it'll start it right from the beginning with the, the alarm sound and start it up and everything. Um, I don't know if I'll be able to get it to do it now. Um, so we'll get it rolling here. And then I'll hit 6. And now... There it is. That's me hitting function six. It just fired all right back up. Come over here, my momentum's at 50. Um, and that's it, that's exactly what I'm talking about. I just hit function six, that's all I did, and it rebooted, so. And, and there it is, because it rebooted, it notches right back up into to high speed again. And I'm not sure what to do about this. Um, I've been playing around with it. Uh, Tommy, I've sent you uh, an email. Um, but it's kind of driving me crazy right now. And uh, uh, I've even fought, had a few other issues with it as well, as far as sometimes when you turn it on, it, uh, it sounds like it's turned into a tweeter, and everything is such a high-pitched sound. Um, I'll just shut this off. It sounds like, like it, what I mean by that is, instead of it sounding normal, it sounds like it's been put into a cup or something, and it's such a high-pitched sound, I can't even explain it, and I, it didn't do it there. Um, but another thing you probably noticed when I turned it on is it, it automatically starts brake squealing, and uh, uh, I'm not sure like if it's a sound file or not. Um, I guess I could see what happens if I put a different sound file or something on there, and... Uh, uh, see if it does any things, but this isn't the only train it does it with. It actually does it with my other Kato train, uh, but that has a, a, a look sound decoder in there. And the same thing, as soon as I turn it on, it's like changing all these functions automatically without me doing anything. And it's really starting to get to the point where I'm wondering, maybe it's not the trains, maybe it's the Zephyr that's causing me problems. So I just cleared the system in it. Um, cleared all like addresses out of it to start fresh and thinking that might be it and it's not it's still doing the problem so show you one more time hit the power and then if anyone can help me out with this they see the brake squeal 
There's the alarm. Fires up. And now it's gonna rev right up. Wait for it. There it is. Revs right up and then it comes down. So if anyone can help me out with that or tell me what the heck's going on, um, I'd really appreciate it because it's, it's starting to get frustrating, uh, especially now that this is my second train that's going on with this. So, uh, thanks for watching, um, and uh, just email me or just leave any comments right down to, uh, if you know anything there. Um, actually, before I do let you go, let me just put it, uh, switch it over to my PR3 here. Um, so I'll put it in semi-automatic, another thing I've been having trouble with. So I'll write the changes. So now it's on semi-automatic. So now when I instantly start rolling, we'll fire it up, let it do its weird thing here. So semi-automatic is designed so when the train's rolling, it'll notch up on its own. But if you choose to to want to notch it up or notch it down, there's it just revved up on its own, does it every time, kind of ticking me off. Um, Semi-automatic is designed that if you want to rev it up on your own as well as it doing it on its own, you can't. For some reason, I can't with this. Uh, so here, I'll put it in reverse and I'll show you. It'll, it revs right up before it starts moving, which I don't want. <laughs> um, and then... Oh, it's actually doing it now, so... <laughs> surprise, surprise. Maybe, uh... That's something weird, but see now it's stopped and it's revving like mad and I don't want that. I want to be able to notch it down, so I guess I'm going to have to use a manual, but I know there's a way around it. Um, so anyways, that's semi-automatic, so we'll leave it at that. Thanks for watching. Just shut that off. And uh, yeah, if anyone can help me out with this little bit of an issue here or anything, uh, I'd very much appreciate it. Thanks for watching.